Hello again. This is a pretty special video for me personally because it highlights one of the main reasons for why I'm so fascinated with mathematics. Every once in a while it just completely takes you by surprise. So here we go. Last video we've looked at some simple classical fractals such as the Sierpinski triangle and the Cox snowflake. We saw that fractals can often be defined by a base shape together with the generator rule. For example, in the case of the Sierpinski triangle, the base shape is a black triangle, and the generator rule is whenever you see a black triangle, replace it with a black triangle with the middle taken out. But this video will go off on a complete tangent to something seemingly unrelated. We will analyze a game. More specifically, we will look at a game called Towers of Hanoi. Some of you may have heard of it before, but I will explain it anyway. The game is very simple. In the beginning of the game you have three pegs, and some number of discs arranged in a pyramid on one of the pegs. Now the player moves these discs around on these pegs, one at a time, and the goal of the game is to recreate this pyramid on the last peg here. So you just have to move all the discs from here to here. Now the only constraint is that you cannot ever place a disc on a disc of smaller size. So I can't do this because this disc is smaller than this one. So it won't let me do that. So subject to that constraint you should be able to figure out how to do this if you play around with it a bit. Um, so there we go. So I win. But in this video we will not just fumble around and attempt to solve the game. In this video we will actually solve the game. To do so we will look at what we call the state space of the problem. A less fancy way of saying that is that we will basically look at all the possibilities of moves in every single situation. So here's how we're going to visualize the state space. We are going to represent it as a graphical structure where the nodes are the possible states of the game and the edges represent the connectivity, from what state can I get to what other state. So let's pretend that we started on the second peg instead of the first peg and our goal again is to get to the third peg. So basically we start in this state and now we have exactly two moves available to us. We either take the red disc to the left or we put it down to the right. Depending on which one you choose, you get either to this state or to this state. Now when we go down here, we have again a couple of moves available to us. We can either take this red disc and put it back up, in which case we travel back up, or we can put the red disc all the way to the right, in which case we travel here and get to this state, or we can take the blue one and put it down to the right, in which case we'll get here. Now you can go on exploring this structure and again looking at all the possibilities and basically graphing the connectivity there. And surely enough, if you go down enough in this graphical structure, you are going to get to a point where you have reached the goal state. In other words, all the disks are nicely stacked up on the last peg. So to get your solution, basically just bag up these edges and that will tell you what moves to do at what parts. But now let me show you the most amazing thing here. I'm going to zoom out and show you the entire state space of this game. <laughs> Looks familiar? The state space forms a Sierpinski triangle. Isn't that amazing in some way? I mean, how is this game related in any way, shape or form to the procedure of taking a triangle and cutting out the middles? So I can't directly answer that question, but let's at least look at some interesting properties here of this state space. So first of all, Note that whenever all the disks are stacked up nicely in a pyramid on a single peg, they form the vertices of this huge triangle. In other words, all the disks are on the middle, all the disks are on the right, and all the disks are on the left. Also another interesting thing is that um, this game, just like the Sierpinski triangle, has a very recursive fractal nature in the following sense. If you ignore the purple disk, which is not moved in any of these states, so the purple disk just remains in the middle. Then this is just the state space for the Towers of Hanoi problem with only three disks. So basically ignore the purple one and you have only three disks. Right? So basically, to form the solution we went from the top here to the bottom here. Now we go along here and we get to this point here. Well what is this point? All we've done is we've moved all the top three disks. We moved them from this purple one, we moved it to the left. Now we actually move the purple one. So, and that makes us, you know, transfer to a different sub-game. So this is a sub-game of the Towers of Hanoi problem with three disks, where the purple disk, the biggest disk, is on the very right. 
and you can see that there are basically many subgames. Like this is a subgame as well, and then this is a subgame as well of size one, sort of. Finally, as a side note, people have been playing around with generalizations of Towers of Hanoi for a while. The original game had three discs and three pegs, but you can imagine varying both of those numbers and looking at the resulting state spaces. So for example, this was the state space for four discs on three pegs. Now what would the state space look like if I only added a single peg? So we would have four discs on four pegs. Well, you would get this. So <laughs> the graph is much harder to show now because it's not planar now, meaning that you can't lay it out in 2D without any intersections of the edges. But you can still see that it's fractal. Nonetheless, it's not as pretty as the Sierpinski Triangle fractal, but still. In any case, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed seeing a very familiar fractal pop out in a seemingly unrelated setting, such as a simple game. Um, links to everything are in the video description, and I'll see you later.